One of the many things I firmly, firmly, firmly believe in that anybody who learns the skill sets of a millionaire can become a millionaire. When I say anybody, I literally mean generally anybody minus any health, disabilities, things like that. You see, I'm wearing this shirt here that says enjoy capitalism because capitalism may not be a 100% perfect system. I've lived in a socialistic environment, lived, not vacation, lived. And I've lived in a dictatorship environment. I've lived with a family members who were half my family were all communist and an imperialist. I believe in capitalism and many of my followership who follow these, uh, the content on valuetainment from all around the world, 220 countries that follow this content, you will know I will constantly encourage people to study this system, this model, because it works effectively. Now, some people don't like that, but it's what I believe in firmly. Uh, and, and, you know, when people say, well, you don't understand, I didn't come from a rich family, I didn't come... I didn't come from a rich family. My dad worked at a 99 cent store for 15 years. My parents got a divorce. My mother had to go back to Iran because she ran out of money. I'm a welfare child. I joined the army. I had a 1.8 GPA. I'm the last person in our high school. You ask any one of my high school buddies, we'll tell you I'm the last person anybody would have ever expected to become successful. But because I, I, I one event, father having a heart attack, going into the hospital, seeing him lose 40 pounds, one event made me completely change this guy. And not... Not temporary change. A lot of people change temporarily. I'm going to get into my message here. I'm talking permanent change. I know a lot of people that will work hard for 90 days. And then they go back to the bad habits. They'll exercise for 90 days. Then they go back to the bad habits. They'll keep a good time for 90 days. Then they'll go back to the bad habits. They'll read books for 90 days. Then I'm talking permanent, permanent obsession change that is going to last with you for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. That's what it's going to take to be able to make the kind of money that millionaires make. The money's out there. The money circulates. It doesn't stay in a place. This money that I have right now in my pocket, I want you to think about this here. This, this $200 here, guess what? Ask the question, how many people think this is touched? How many people has this touched? How many people? It touches thousands and thousands of hands have touched this. And it's with me now. I can choose to do whatever I can do with this $200, but it's gonna keep circulating. And eventually, hands end up getting the most, those who learn the skill sets of attracting this and retaining it and growing it. That's what I'm going to talk about here with you today. I did a video a few months back. It was titled, uh, uh, How to Really Become a Millionaire. Entrepreneur put it up. It became the number one video on Entrepreneur's YouTube channel. And then for us, it's done very, very well. Let's, as a matter of fact, put a link on here on the bottom, um, it's called How to Really Become a Millionaire. Let's put the image as well so people can see what it looks like. Today, I want to talk to you about the 11 skill sets that millionaires master, okay? And I'm going to get very detailed about this on these areas for them to master. And then you got to make a choice yourself that whether you want to kind of pass up on this and just kind of say, oh, great video, Pat, phenomenal video, man, as usual, great content. To me, what I love the most is, the type of messages I love the most is when a guy sends me a message and says, I started watching your videos about a year ago, and I've followed all the content. That you've, I've never missed a single video. I've watched every one of your videos. A year ago, I made $7,000. This last month, I made $93,000 in a month. I like that. I like it when somebody tells me our company grossed $3 million last year. This year, we're on track to grossing $13 million. Those are the messages I like to hear because they're implementing and growing. So you will get the content. It's on you to implement it. So let's go through number one. And by the way, I'm assuming you automatically have to have work ethic. I'm not even going to put work ethic as a point because it's not a skill set. It's a mentality. But you, if you don't work, none of these things are going to affect you in any possible way. Maybe a little bit, but not dramatically. Let's, let me get right into it. Number one skill set that generally uh, millionaires uh, master is persuasion. And let me explain to you what I mean by persuasion, what I mean you know, they master. Persuasion to me is on many different fronts. One, they have to persuade their family that I'm going to go become an entrepreneur. Please support me. They have to persuade their wife if they're married, their husband if they're married. They have to persuade their kids, parents, peers. They have to persuade investors. They have to persuade a, an employee to want to come work with them when they're small. They have to persuade a group of salespeople to want to come and sell their product. They have to persuade people on why their product is a special product. They have to persuade why their industry is a special industry and what type of an impact that's made in your life. You got to learn how to 
persuade people. You got to learn how to persuade when they're selling a customer, when your product may not yet be at the level you want it to be. You need to learn how to persuade investors on why they ought to invest into your company. You need to persuade executives and talent who are with established companies. Why ought to, why should they consider even working with something like you, working with an entrepreneur like you who is maybe not established yet. Maybe you're not there yet. You know, you got to learn how to persuade your competitors, persuade your partners, Persuade your vendors, persuade your carriers, persuade. There is a lot of persuasion that you got to do. And by the way, you also, you got to learn to persuade yourself as well. You got to psych yourself out to get into the mode of wanting to get to work on a daily basis, especially those days that you know it's not an exciting day. You got to persuade yourself. Persuasion is one of their skill sets. You got to persuade when you learn how to negotiate. Negotiation is a form of persuasion. Learning how to sell. If you don't know how to sell, kiss entrepreneurship goodbye. Because selling is a form of persuasion. Negotiation is a form of persuasion. Speaking from stage is a form of persuasion. Not everybody speaks the same style. But, you know, everything there is persuasion. Number one skill set I put up there is persuasion. Number two, number two, let me tell you one thing that, you know, most millionaires master is reading people. Reading people. And I'll, and I'll tell you what I mean by reading people, Okay. The reason why reading people, millionaires end up generally becoming good at reading people is because they've been ripped off, backstabbed, lied to, cheated so many times that there are a lot of signals that they see a trend and saying, this person's like that, reminds me of this person. You got to learn how to read people. You got to learn how to read a customer. You got to learn how to read an employee. You got to learn how to read someone who is absolutely full of it. Sometimes I get surprised how some uh, uh, people who are pretty successful, they're making $100,000, $300,000 a year, how easily they fall for the trap of somebody who's full of it. Like, how do you not read that sometimes, right? You got to learn how to read it and, and a, a certain level of paranoia when you're reading people. And then also, when I'm saying reading people is not just on the negative side, reading people on someone that's truly, you did something wrong and you need to go out there and do something about it. You need to read people that need you to make a right effort to take care of them. You to make the right effort to, you know, treat them in a way that they need to be treated. That's also reading people. Another one is when I say reading people is being able to think what a customer is going to need now, what a customer is going to need a year from now, three years from now, five years from now, and reading them. Being able to read a person that starts with your company at an early stage and what were they thinking about when they were at your level, at a new level, you're not speaking to them from your level, millionaires, they got to learn how to read somebody at that level and give them the belief that they need at that level versus somebody that's been around a little longer that needs to kind of man up or woman up or mature as an entrepreneur. And they're not. They're just treating this as a lollygagging with the industry. And that's a completely different conversation with that person. Say, grow up already. You've been in this thing for 5, 10, 15 years. What's next? You're going to be like this your entire life. So reading to know when, where, who, what, when, they eventually become very good at reading people. Number three, this one's going to sound strange to a lot of people when I first say it, but it'll make sense to you here in a minute. It's called sharing the wealth. Hang tight. This is not a hokey, corny type of thing. I'll explain to you what I mean by sharing the wealth. The people that I've met who have created lots of wealth. I live in a nice community, and you know, I, I go to the guy across the street. He's a guy who was part of a, 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 a technology software company. He was one of the many guys that became very wealthy when this company was bought out. I go to the guy on the other side, lives in a six and a half million dollar house. They built, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 different dealerships. Berkshire Hathaway came and bought them. They won the biggest dealership here in town in Dallas and Texas. They bought them out. He was one of the many people who all experienced a lot of wealth and they made lots of money. I go and sit down with people who were part of startups. And you hear stories of so many people. You look at Microsoft on why they kept growing. Apple, when they kept growing. When, when Steve Jobs died, most people don't know this. He only owned 0.6% of Apple stock. Think about it. The CEO, the founder, only ended up owning 0.6% of stock. Now, some people say, well, it's because he left, he went to next, and he sold another. Okay, I get it. Still, 0.6%. Microsoft, Bill Gates. So many people became wealthy with Microsoft. So many people became wealthy with Amazon. So many people become wealthy. Anything that's ever at the highest scale, wealth has to be created by multiple, multiple people. The Clippers organization is owned by a former employee of Microsoft. 
the Seattle is it Seattle Seahawks and uh, 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 you know Paul Allen Trailblazers. It's owned by it's a former Microsoft. So when you go and study this, you will notice that a lot of people who create their wealth do it that way. I remember one time. I had a, a, a gentleman I was working with, and he was, uh, um, he was Jewish. And he would always tell me things about why the Jewish community has money and makes money. And so I say, you know, what? You know, very, very vocal guy, big personality, always had money, always made money, and everybody that touched him also made money with him. I said, so, you know, what is it? He says, let me tell you the, the key to success to the Jewish community business people. I said, what is it? He said, when we make money, a lot of people make money. He says, you know what happens when you make money, a lot of people make money? I said, what's that? Everybody constantly wants to go in business with you because why? Every time they go in business with you, who makes money? A lot of people make money. So you keep getting people that keep coming and doing business with you. Now, some of you may say, that's not true. I know this guy that he made his money and it was all him and all this. Fine. He's probably not going to get a lot of people that are going to want to follow him and do business with him from the past. If you generally see that nobody from the past is continuously doing business with a person, it's either that person chose, it's the other people said, when he makes money, only he makes money, nobody else makes money. You got to learn how to share the wealth where you continuously have deals for the rest of your life. Number four, leverage. It's very critical. Leverage. Millionaires master leverage. They are master at understanding leverage. And I think one of the reasons why they understand leverage is the sooner you learn that in order to do anything big, you need a team, is the sooner you'll start scaling at a very fast pace. You know, especially a lot of the driven, self-motivated guys that had high GPAs or did very good in school and they had good grades and they were always good at doing the homework right and nobody does it better than me. I'm a perfectionist. They typically have the hardest time. They typically have the hardest time. The guys that didn't have the best grades and they were kind of played a little bit of sports, they generally have, don't have a hard time with this. You know why? Because they've always needed help. So it's kind of like, man, I need, I need help. I still need help. But the ones that typically have independently were very good at homework, they have a hard time knowing that they need help. Leverage is a very, very big deal. So you got to learn how to delegate. What do you delegate? What do you not delegate? How do you manage and study a certain thing that you're delegating to somebody to see if they can full, fully come through with it? Crowdsourcing. At one of my favorite questions to ask our staff, or it doesn't matter who it is, I love to ask, what do you think? What do you think about this? What do you think about this idea? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? What, do you, what are your thoughts? And I like to ask every different type of uh, personality, somebody who is very skeptical but very technical and smart, somebody who is action excited, tell me what gets you excited about this, somebody who's normally in the middle and you don't get a lot of reaction. I want to see you all because I want to know what they think about it. That's part of uh, leverage. So leverage is, you know, team, recruiting, sales, software, technology, social media, everything, marketing, branding, uh, um, uh, collaborating, everything is leverage. How can I leverage to make this thing go faster? Leverage. Number five. Number five. This is a skill set they master. Let me tell you. Recruiting. 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 Let me explain. You recruit a media platform to want to build you up. You recruit talent. You recruit executives. You recruit the best salespeople. You recruit people who are friends that want to go into business with you. Recruit solid, high identity associations. You recruit good friends. You recruit, you know, other people who are extremely successful that also want to associate with you. You recruit them. That's not to sell them anything. That's to sit down and talk and you're learning from one another. You recruit a board. You recruit an advisory board. You recruit the best mentors. Millionaires are great at recruiting the best mentors, partners, investors. They're incredible at networking. They're incredible at connecting. They're incredible at doing any of those things because recruiting to them, they know I am one executive away from scaling my business into doubling my revenues. I'm one salesperson away or one sales leader away from incredibly growing my sales volume of sales by 50, 100, 200, 300%. If I get one strong sales leader, if I get one leader that comes in and does it, they know that. So everything to them is about recruiting. Point number uh, six. This one's also strange, but I'll tell you. Energy management. Energy management. Um, what is energy management? I still don't drink coffee. I just got off the phone with a major player at the AIG who sent me a very, very nice gift. Uh, uh, Mark, thank you for sending that nice gift uh, that you send out. But 
we were talking about energy, and he says, you got a newborn. Are you getting any sleep? I said, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get some sleep. You know, we're getting, I'm waking up every two hours with the baby. And says, so are you still not drinking coffee? I said, I'm still not drinking coffee. So do you do Red Bull? Do you do this? I don't do any of that stuff. I personally don't do any of that stuff. But I have to figure out a way on how to manage my energy because my energy, without it, I can't do anything. And anybody who becomes a millionaire, those who don't, they generally quit at some point. They quit at $100,000 your income. They quit at 150, 200, 300, 400. But everybody quits at some point. Okay? Some people go to the very end and then they quit when they die. But a lot of people quit after two, three, four years of going all in. Most people don't go for a long time. Keep that part in mind. So energy management is what can I do for, you to, for me to increase my energy? So generally I get tired after working eight hours. I don't want to get tired after eight hours. What can I do? Maybe I'm going to go 10 hours. Maybe I'm going to go 12 hours. So I like to stand up and work because this one, stand, my body is standing up. So every time I'm doing this, my body's moving. And when I sit now, I may take a break and I sit. My energy goes lower. Then boom, I stand up again. My body's moving. Things are happening. So figuring out ways to manage in your energy to know how long you can go. Figuring out how you can go on little to no sleep. I know that sounds strange to some people. How do you do that? Your fitness routine, your diet, all of that is part of energy management. Number seven. Anybody who's been following my content for a while, uh, you know I made a video that was called The Most Important Thing to Teach My uh, Children, right? And it's called what? How to Process Issues. Millionaires learn how to process issues. They learn how to problem solve. They learn how to sit there and say, if we need this, we need to do this, 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 this. They know how to think about a problem and come out with a one, two, three step to doing something. Hey, we need to figure this part out. Let's call that person and call this person, call this person, email that guy, call this guy, let me call this person and say, okay, we got it. Here's what we need to do. That person's willing to do this. That person's not interested, but we need to call them back in the next six months. Ba, ba, ba. All this stuff that goes, but it's purely on learning how to process issues. And a part of learning how to process issues, I put this point, it was going to be separate, but I added in this, is within process and issues, where everybody's always bringing them ideas. We should do this. We should buy this. We should do that. We should do that. They also become very good at saying no to 90% of things. Keep that part in mind. They say no to 90% uh, uh, of things because they're trying to identify which areas worth them putting their time into and not their time into, which areas worth them putting their resources into and not putting their resources into, which is part of process and issues. Number eight. Number eight is time management. They learn time management. And generally, you learn time management because a, lo a lot of times... A rookie entrepreneur may not even make it because they're spending way too much time on news, uh, Facebook newsfeed. They're spending way too much time on a game or they're spending way too much time on Snapchat following everybody else. They're spending way too much time on Instagram or all that other stuff. And they're not putting a lot of time into selling, selling, front end, front end, prospecting, prospecting, creating, creating, networking, networking, relationship, relationship. They're not, they're not in the hunt, right? So you don't make it. You go straight to the cemetery of entrepreneurs who are millions and billions of people buried there who didn't make it. They tried and they didn't make it there. Time management is when you learn how to make a one and a half hour appointment become an hour and still effective. How you learn a 30 minute phone call to become 10 minutes. How you learn to leave a message that's an effective message yet it's not a six minute message or a four minute message. They learn how to say a message in a bit of a faster way. They know what area they don't need to put time on and say, this is relationship. I'm not putting a deadline on this because this is relationship. Because sometimes you can also be the complete opposite without, okay, I got to go. And then you, the, other per, the other person is offended by it because they're also busy and you're busy. It's kind of like, listen, I'm as busy as you are. So don't give me this I'm busy type of thing. Everybody's busy at this point. So sometimes people that play that card when they're not, it kind of rubs people the wrong way who have already, they're already in the hunt at a high different level. So time management, they understand that. But they become very good on the time management side. Um, work, hours, week, all in. Um, you know, it's strange how they still find ways to save their sanity because you have to stay sane to go long term. You don't hear a lot of the people that make it to the highest of highest of levels taking way too many vacations. You generally don't hear that. But they'll do a schedule of Saturday, boom, go, Sunday, and on Monday they come back to refuel. You, you'll hear them on Sunday being at a spa or a hotel all day and laying out and relaxing. You'll see them doing those sorts of things for them to re-energize. A lot of rookie entrepreneurs that get to 100, 200, 300, or 400,000 dollars a year income, vacation, 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 vacation. They're wondering how come they don't absolutely explode on scale because they're more concerned about vacation rather than doing the work. So 
that is a part of the millionaire's mindset as well. Nine, how to manage money. They, uh, they have to, you have to learn how to manage money because everything to you is risk. Everything to you is you have these type of resources and it's depleting. What can you do to make the number keep coming up? So the income is increasing your, your savings that you have all uh, uh, in place. Accounting, um, timing of buying something you can't afford or can't afford. I remember when we first started a company, a PHP agency, I uh, told my wife, I said, for five years, I'm not buying a house. And she said, babe, we can afford to buy a house. I said, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not buying a house for five years. Babe, it's only $300,000 down payment. Baby, I'm not buying a house for five years. And I made it very clear. So she knew. I don't even want to talk about buying a house because everything that came in is going back into the business. Everything. We rented for the first five years of me being in. And we, had, we, we could afford to buy a house, but we rented. We rented, we rented, we rented. And then we bought a house. Then it's a different story. Um, why? Because I could do a lot more with that $300,000 in the company than I could with $300,000 down payment on a house or $600,000 down payment on a house. Why would I want to do that? I don't want to do that. I want to stretch the money and make that $600,000, $6 million. Why would I want to tie that money up to something automatically right now? I don't need to be doing that. So risking it, saving to be able to risk more. One of the things about Apple that they're known for is they're very much about cash, and the reason why they're always been known as stingy or all this criticism that people gave to Apple, they had cash to make decisions. Google has cash to make decisions. Companies have cash to make decisions. And when you have cash, when you want to buy something, part of you can do that. So cash is a very, very big part of uh, uh, managing money as well. So number nine is how to manage money. Number 10 is how to be aggressively patient. This is kind of strange because how do you become aggressively patient? One you are so aggressive and assertive on your part on what you can do to grow, but psychologically, you're patient to know everything's going to work out. Because listen, I'm telling you the reason why I believe anybody and everybody could become a millionaire, anybody and everybody could become a millionaire, because there's a formula to it. And some of the people that hate it when I say that is because they tried and they quit too early or they don't want to work that hard. So it upsets them because they would rather have an escape to say, it's not true. You have to be smart. You have to be from a wealthy family. I'm not smart. I'm not from a wealthy family. I learn. I read 11, 1200 books because I was just feeding my mind constantly. So it's not, I don't come from a wealthy or very intelligent, intellectual type of, I come from a simple, hardworking family is what I come from. So, but you're going to have to learn a part that is just working, 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 working. Patient, patient, patient. I know it's coming. 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 Working, 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 working. And the reason why patience would come, say whatever product you sell. So let's just say it's real estate. If I know every week I plant 100 new seeds, whether it's for a loan officer that I can build a relationship for him to use me as a realtor, whether it's to hardcore accountants that are working in a market that I want him to refer me as a realtor to their client, whether it's a community of everybody that buys and sells homes, Every week I add 100 people to my seat. I'm planting 100 seeds. Two weeks, that means I have how many, how many seeds? 200 seeds. Three, 300 seeds. 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. I know something's about to happen. I know I'm about to get a call and say, hey, Patrick, this is John giving you a call. Uh, you and I met about three months ago, and you were a realtor. We got your car. Look, we're thinking about selling our house, and we'd like to get together with you. We really like your approach. Are you available for us to get together later on today? Sure. Excellent. Because I'm doing this, I'm guaranteed to get this. I know for a fact this is going to happen. Most people, the reason why they don't get this, they're like, there's these three guys. If they buy the house from me, I'm going to be a millionaire. There's these two people. If they do business with me, they're just waiting on those two, three people. It's not going to work. Seed, 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 seed. Boom. Patient. It's coming. It comes. Then all of a sudden, when this thing, when the floodgates open, let me tell you, you better get the bank to be ready. When the floodgates opens, then it's just like, then you're saying, I can't meet today, but here's what I could do. I can send one of my associates to meet with you, and you can come to my office tomorrow. Now you're not going. Now the people are coming to you because demand's high on you. Everybody wants to work with you. You have credibility. That's what I mean by aggressively patient. And the last point I'll make here to you, last point I'll make to you here is this. Those skill sets that these millionaires master, one of the skill sets that they master is learning. Now, this is kind of strange. You master learning? Yes. They're constantly focused on improvement. They're constantly focused on improvement. 
how can I become better in this? How can I become better in that? How can I become better in this? How can I make the company better? How can I make the customer service better? How can I make the product better? How can I make my communication skill level better? How can I make my this level? How can I make... Everything is about improving. Everything to them. How can we beat our prior best? What's the most we ever did in here? 68? Let's do 72 this month. What's the most we ever done over here? We did 102. Let's try to break that number. What was the most you ever done? What's the most calls you made in a made? What's the most appointments you ran in a week? What's the, everything is let's beat that. 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 Because it's always constantly about improvement. Then all of a sudden, every department is getting better and improving. Every department is getting better and improving. So they're learning. They're all about self-education. They have a beginner's mindset. Let me explain. Sometimes when you see people that have made money and they're extremely cocky, they no longer have the beginner's mindset. They've already surpassed what they thought they're going to make money-wise. So beginner's mindset is somebody that's so curious. How do I do this? How do I get this better? What do I do about this? How do I do that? How do I get this thing? What do I do that? What do I... Everything is about learning, 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 learning. That's all they're doing. They want to learn, learn, learn is what they're doing, right? So everything is about constantly beating their prior best. Who do I work well with? Who do I not work well with? What do I need to improve? I need to change this weakness part of my attitude that doesn't work well. This type of people, I need to get better at working with women or men or couples. I need to work better with people who are twice my age or half my age. I need to learn how to work that area better. So those are 11 skill sets, 11 skill sets that millionaires master. And my challenge to you is if there are any areas here that you want to say, man, I want to get better at that as well. You go seek finding out on what you need to do by being resourceful and finding out how can I become better in this area. And eventually, you'll become better in those, those, those skill sets as well. But this is going to take effort. This is not one video that's going to change everything for you. I'm so excited. I'm going to go do it. No. Plan of action on improving these areas. Score yourself in these 11 areas. I'm good in this. I'm terrible in this. I don't even know what this is. I got to get better at this. Who's good at this? Let me contact this person and get better at it. So... That's my plan of action for you guys that I'd like to see you put together to get the types of results that you want to get. But those are the 11 skill sets of a millionaire, uh, um, a millionaire's master. Paul, throw me my favorite pillow real quick. Gang, let me tell you, I've been doing this for the last two weeks now. Our goal is to get to 100,000 subs on YouTube by August 31st. I'm getting so many great messages. People that are posting our stuff on Instagram, Twitter, you know, commenting on YouTube and inviting other peers and sending it on their newsletter and all this other stuff, which is helping out tremendously. And some of you guys that are going above and beyond, uh, you know who you are. I've messaged you. I thank you. Thank you for doing that. But we want to get to 100,000 subs. We feel pound for pound we can go against any other YouTube channel on the subject of entrepreneurship. And so if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And if you got your friends following, please help them also. Encourage them also subscribe to this channel. I'm launching something very, very massive in August, and our goal is to get to 100,000 by the time we launch that project. With that being said, if you saw this video on a completely different website, you can always come back to patrickbedavid.com. Boom. And if you got any questions or comments, please comment on the bottom. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.